Welcome back. The governor of Oyo State, Abiola Jimobi, is winding down and preparing to hand over power to the governor-elect, Mr. Shein Makinde, come May the 29th. One of the actions set in motion by Governor Ajimovi is the inauguration of a 27-man transition committee selected from his camp and that of the governor-elect. The governor is asking the committee to draw up a master plan for the smooth transition of power. Our correspondent, Bukola Uriwo, has the rest of the story. Are your state government officials gather here at the governor's office for the inauguration of a 27-member committee that will ensure a seamless transition from the current administration by Governor Abiola Jimobi to the incoming government of Mr. Shei Makinde, they are expected to organize a befitting handover ceremony. Leadership is therefore not about being nice. It's about being right and being strong. The Joint Transition Committee, which is the first of its kind in the state, comprises 17 members from the current government and 10 selected from the team of the incoming governor-elect. For Governor Ajimobi, the event should not be seen as a mere stunt targeted at making history, but a deliberate step to promote the tenets of politics without bitterness. Governance is a serious business to be supervised by competent hands. More importantly, it is an expression of the commitment of government in ensuring the success of this all-important process that will impact positively on the progress and development of our dear state. <laughs> Reacting to the inauguration, some residents of Ibado, the Ayo State Capital, speak to us on the expectations from the incoming government. I hope that uh, Mr. Shei Makinde will come and have focus on, major, on prog programs so that when he leaves office, he can, people can point to his achievements. When you're educated, you're in power. And empowerment necessarily doesn't mean that you, are, you have um, resources to do business or money to feed yourself. No, it, 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 the, the, the mind, you know, the mind should be empowered to be driven in the right direction. The 27-member transition committee is expected to submit its report in four weeks and hopefully take into consideration the requests of the people. Bukola Oriowo, Channel Television News. From politics to education now, the federal government is leaving no one in doubt about their commitment to ending the menace of out-of-school children in the country. Speaking in Abuja shortly after monitoring the 2019 National Common Entrance Examination, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mr. Sonny Echono, explains that the government is determined to ensure that every child is given the opportunity to go to school. African Voices, a news magazine program of cable net news network CNN, marks 10 years of the feature show with its long-term partner and telecoms giant Globalcom. Both organizations celebrated the partnership by hosting a party. Other viewers of African Voices in Nigeria and guests have been featured in the show. It's a cocktail party to celebrate a decade of African creativity and pace setters through CNN's African Voices and a fruitful partnership with Globacom, an organization who believes in the African story. Afro High Life Kuna Adekunle Gold lifts to his calling, thrilling guests with his best. parties packed with representatives from GLOW and producers of African Voices, as well as a cross-section of viewers who have come to adopt the program as their own. Oh, yeah. oh, 
Over the years, African Voices has featured the continent's brightest and dazzling personalities, including Nobel Prize winner Professor Wale Shoinka, world writer Chimamanda Adichie, and Nigeria's music legend Sonia Day, popularly referred to as the king of juju music. African Voices is believed to have created much impact in Africa, and this is a delight to Globacom and CNN. The last decade has proven that African Voices resonates with our global audience. And I'm thankful that you're here to join us today, and I'm also thankful for your continued support as we profile the African change makers making a difference on the continent. We all have a role in building Africa's future. For CNN African Voices, they play their part by spotlighting a continent that has a lot to offer to the world and undoubtedly accelerating its global influence. At Globalcom, we play our part by providing world-class telecommunication services and supporting platforms that really promote growth and so I promote growth and success in the nation. Globalcom and CNN look forward to a future of mutually beneficial partnership of helping to raise the profile of the continent's pacemakers amongst its international audience. There's more celebration, but this time it's in Ogun State, where the fourth edition of the African Drums Festival brings together over 100 troops from across Africa to the state capital, Abelkuta. The state government believes that the continental event is apt for showcasing and sustaining Africa's rich heritage. The African Drum Festival 2019, designed to unite and explore Africa's cultural roots using the rhythm of traditional drums as a vehicle, witnesses the display of 40 African troops from Nigeria and other African countries at a grand finale, most of whom are custodians of their cultural heritage. The event, tagged Drumming for the Future, hosted by the Ogun State Government at the Cultural Center, saw dignitaries in attendance, including the state governors, Senator Ibukunle Amosun and his wife, his Ondo state counterpart, Rotimi Akeridolu, other state officials, traditional rulers, the festival consultant, Nobel laureate professor, Wale Inka, and other culture scholars. <laughs> This is the fourth installment of the Drum Festival and the last under the Amosun administration. For the governor, it's a legacy that is what's sustaining as it will serve as a source of tourist attraction. Drums can be found in every part of Africa because of its significance to the culture, from using it as a tool for conveying important messages to literally enjoying its art history as a form of entertainment. It is expected that festival like this can reposition the creative industry and serve as a huge source of tourism for both Ogun State and Nigeria. The manufacturing sector expands this month, and Bissi will be giving us the numbers on Business News. Welcome to Business News. Nigeria's manufacturing sector has expanded for the 25th consecutive month, and that's according to the Central Bank's latest Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index for April. The PMI expanded to 57.7 index points within the month, while all 17 subsectors surveyed recorded growth. Similarly, the production level index for the manufacturing sector recorded sustained growth at 58.8 points. New orders index also grew to 59.0 points, while the non-manufacturing sector expanded with the composite PMI at 58.7 points. 
The Purchasing Managers Index is one of the most important indicators for international investors around the world for providing accurate advance signals of changing economic growth and inflation. And the Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, PTAD, has commenced a nationwide verification exercise for all pensioners of Treasury and institutions under the Defined Benefit Scheme. The first phase of the exercise, which is being monitored by the National Assembly, is ongoing in Lagos till May 9, 2019, ahead of scheduled exercises in other geopolitical zones of the Federation. And supervise uh, the exercise. The exercise is meant for verification of the pensioners, the retirees from uh, various uh, agencies, about uh, 270 agencies. The university lecturers, colleges of education and polytechnic, the power holding railway staffs, uh, the aluminium company staffs, the national airways uh, staff, and so on and so forth. So, to make sure that everything is well organized. Yes, I believe in Nigeria government, no, because the the, 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 this, the reason for this exercise now is to pay our money in time so that they, they know those who are still alive. To, because we are appealing to government now to pay our money in time so that uh, we, we will not be suffering because we cannot do anything again. In company news now, Africa's former oil and energy group, ITO, has announced the appointment of Mr. Victor Koronkwa as its new managing director. His elevation follows the retirement of Mr. Chike Onyejekwe from the position. In a statement, the energy giant says all appointments take immediate effect. ITO, which operates one of Nigeria's most prolific blocks, OML29, is presently bankrolling Nigeria's national soccer teams. Now the markets, the fourth trading week of April at the stock market ends downbeat as the NSC All Share Index dropped by 1.15% while the equities capitalization depreciated by 1.09%. All other sectoral sub-indexes except the NSO oil and gas sector also finished lower, particularly the consumer goods index, which dipped by 2.58%. The share price of Dangote flour mills is top on the list of 30 gainers for the week, up by 4 to 3.55%. Guinness Nigeria led 39 other losers down 19% while 97 equities remained unchanged. Meanwhile, a total turnover of 1.43 billion shares worth 15.08 billion naira were traded in 15,342 deals in four sessions this week, with the shares of Japol, Julius Berger and UBA as the most contributors to the volume. Nigeria and Saudi Arabia plan to draft a memorandum of understanding on an oil and gas partnership that could lead to the construction of a new refinery and investment in liquefied natural gas. This was made known in a statement released by Nigeria's Petroleum Ministry two days after the Minister of Petroleum Resources, Dr. Ibe Kachiku, held talks with Saudi energy officials. The statement explains that the areas of interest will cover the existing refinery revamp, building of a brand new refinery, LNG investments and product supply trading in crude and refined products. The statement further hints that an early draft of a memorandum of understanding between both countries would be ready within the first week of May. And that's it on Business News. It's back to Melinda. Many thanks, Vissi. And still ahead on the news at 10, Dominic Team hands 11-time champion Rafa Nadal his first ever Barcelona Open semi-final loss. That's on Sports News. Stay with us. <laughs>